When the budget was passed in March, the Integrity Commission was allocated roughly $1.85 billion. In the supplementary estimates, the Integrity Commission got over $195 million more bringing the grand total to over $2 billion. Member of Parliament for Southwest St. Catherine, Everald Warmington, was concerned. We haven't seen an audit of that department, table in this house, but they're spending taxpayers' money. So who is going to provide the audit for that department? When are we going to see audit for that department over the years? And secondly, this amount you have here of $193 million, does it include any part of the employment of overseas forensic auditor to look into accounts here? And if so, how much of this is going towards paying overseas forensic auditors to look in people's uh, returns? The Integrity Commission had indicated that an international forensic examiner was hired to look at three companies connected to Prime Minister Andrew Holness. That was part of the process to examine the statutory declarations of the Prime Minister. Mr. Warmington went further. In that you are dealing with the department. In acquiring the services of the overseas forensic auditor, We want to know. What procurement method was used? Yes, was there any procurement method? Or it was just employed as a friend from overseas? Remember, with the, with the greatest of respect, I, I think you have the wrong meeting. <laughs> there was a, a meeting earlier this morning, the oversight meeting. Were you not there? In the funds... You are providing funds for them, so they must justify to you why right. they are asking for this. Right. So, 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 member, under our arrangements uh, to preserve the independence of the Integrity Commission, funds are provided on a line item basis, and it's within the powers of the Integrity Commission to use the funds that are provided by the government and taxpayers of the country in ways that are consistent with their mandate. To the extent that you have a question on how they have chosen to use those funds, I would humbly submit that that question is better directed to the Integrity Commission. In relation to the auditing of the commission, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark said a private and independent auditor would do the job. I expect that the audit, we get an audit report at that department before the next financial year, before the next budget comes here. There's no way we're going to approve another $2 billion for the department that has not been audited for years. Okay? So I expect that the audit be laid here before March next year because we're not going to allow it to pass through here if I'm the only person to stand and say, no, I'm going to do it. M but member, there must be an audit that department. Remember, I don't think any reasonable person would, can object to your, uh, to, to your requirement. These are public funds. And, but, and I have no reason to expect that that's a difficult proposition. Everal Warmington, to me and to my understanding, you don't have no shame and you don't have no integrity in you. Now, these people come to Parliament yesterday. They came to Parliament to discuss about the old IC report and how it worked and all of that. And you are trying to change the narrative from that. You are trying to change the narrative from that and trying to attack the Integrity Commission with your big mouth. With your mumma lash itself, you are trying to attack the Integrity Commission. All when your members them, your party them, your, 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 your co-worker them will laugh after you because you make a fool of yourself. You won't stop. All when Elijah Clark to ask the man to stop. This is not the place for it. This is not what we come to discuss. The man still down upon the Integrity Commission. But people, Integrity Commission shame the whole of them in a parliament. Integrity Commission even walk with them own water because the Integrity Commission not trust none of them in a parliament. Integrity Commission no one them poison them so they walk with them own water. Bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Me hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful morning. Now my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, 
always put God first in every and any situation. Just always remember to call upon God. Always remember to pray because a prayer day keep the devil away. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, we have a lot coming up inside this update. So you definitely don't want to miss none. So watch the video until the end to get a better understanding of what is going on. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you don't want Mark Golding to become the next Prime Minister, like the video, share the video, and type Prime Minister Mark Golding in the comment section. All right? Make run in and come back. We soon forward. Welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. Them. We continually support the channel and help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if it's a new viewers, first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform. My viewers and my subscribers, we are now on our way to 100,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed yet, now is the right time for you to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell. We are now at 97,000 subscribers. That is a great achievement. You know what is a great achievement as well? The Integrity Commission not take no chat from Andrew Ones and his administration. The Integrity Commission even work with their own water to parliament because they don't trust anyone inside of that parliament they are questioning what really happened to each and every individual whenever they enter that parliament something is off something now go right so viewers and subscribers check out this video from the integrity commission i want to add a personal note mr chairman if you'll allow me that back on this question of malice I have been a lay preacher in the Methodist Church for decades. Malice is not in my makeup, and it is not in the makeup of the commissioners. And there may be persons who need to repent, and they can join me at church, Providence Methodist, any Sunday. I don't know. If something is wrong with the water in Parliament, why some people, the moment they get into Parliament, they say certain things and behave a certain way. I don't know if that is it. As a result, I decided... This I wasn't going to take the chance of drinking any water here. Another feature, Mr. Chairman, which I'm very serious about, is that I, because of what has been happening, I personally intend to see if I can meet with Senator Longmore, Doctor, to have a word with her because it may well be that she needs to have a word with some members of the House. The Integrity Commission also questioned the fact that why as the report were released and sent to Parliament, why as the report were signed off and sent to Parliament, a particular news outlet get the report and could be able to tell what is inside of that report and not just that report alone but other report as well and people they might blame the pnp say the pnp a release the report remember you know the report did not send to the pnp the report sent to the house of parliament which is sent to a bunch of labor right so how comes pnp would be the one to release the report to 
a media outlet worse a Jamaican Labour Party associate news channel. How oh, that would not work, people. So that's why you can know that these people, they're a bunch of mix up and they're doing these things because they want the Jamaican people to say, okay, the Integrity Commission, they're not credible. We can't listen to them. So the, the, the Jamaican people would help to fight down the Integrity Commission. So that's why I said to each and everyone, just stay focused. Leave the Integrity Commission. Let them do them job. But people, leave a like on this video and check out this video right here. Now in relation to this annual report, Mr. Chairman, it was dispatched to the Parliament in late June the letter that I signed sending, sending it is dated the 24th of June. And I did notice that no sooner than the annual report left the offices of the, the Integrity Commission, no sooner than it left the offices, there were public broadcasts of it before it was tabled. And I noticed that it happened also with another report that was sent subsequently and another report that was sent last week. Now, if, if it is thought that anyone in the commission is leaking these reports, we would like it brought to our attention, we would like it investigated. Because anybody in the commission who leaks, if it's an employee, instant dismissal. But I find it strange that it should, that all these things would be leaked immediately after it leaves the commission and sent to parliament. I find it puzzling to understand if it is happening from the Commission, why is it that it is delayed, the leak is delayed until, um, until it is sent away from the office. I cast no aspersions. They may even go as far as say the Integrity Commission I take orders from the People's National Party. They are associated with the People's National Party. Now the Integrity Commission and make them no plain and straight say so them not take order from nobody. Not even the Oversight Committee where Andrew Wallace create for all along the Integrity Commission. The Integrity Commission and make them no plain and straight say, so listen, we not take no chat from you know. We not take no chat at all from who know we are doing with Jabba and we are doing it in the right and proper way and we no care and bribe we, we no care and buy we out and we not sell out. Now people, the Integrity Commission has stand firm on their foot. And that is why you see, even the Jamaican Labour Party are trying to destroy the Integrity Commission because they realize that these people are not easy to be broke. Them can break them. So they might do everything in them power now to turn the people of Jamaican mind against the Integrity Commission. And that's why I say, let us stick together. Let us defend the Integrity Commission if we not really want to see something come out of everything that is going on because they can't play with the Integrity Commission. So people, check out this video. As regards some other statements made in this room about giving orders. The Commission takes orders from no one other than the court and it needs to be understood. The Commission takes orders from no one other than the court. Of course, there is God-given orders which we all obey. And I hope, Mr. Chairman, that the persons who were making those statements, that they will desist because it fuels such statements fuel a sort of mood among sycophants 
and in the kind of society in which we live. We need to understand that persons should be very careful of what they say. There is a member of parliament who was actually Mr. Chairman sent out um, a document with the photographs of four of us saying that we are bringing down the government. Now in this climate for a member of parliament to be doing that, it's reprehensible. And I have not heard any parliamentarian condemn it. And they are sending out, they are parliamentarians sending out WhatsApp notes of all sorts of reprehensible things. And I hope that somebody will take the leadership to correct them. We on the Commission, we are committed to doing what the legislation permits us to do. That is what is happening. And it is not fair for the employees to be set in a stage where they can be set upon. The commissioners have noted over the past couple of years that remarks have been made that the commission is partisan and that the commission that there is malice in its operations. I'd just like to point out that the persons who made those statements know that it is not true. They know that we know it is not true. And they know that Jamaicans know that it is not true. There is a situation where 70% of the persons on the voters list do not vote. And it is startling that it could be suggested that the five commissioners happen to be partisan. So we reject that. In terms of our performance over the years, we have on record from no one higher than the Prime Minister that in 2020 he commended the Commission in our anti-corruption day celebration. He said under the leadership of Chairman the Honorable Mr. Justice Seymour Panton, the Commission continues to distinguish itself operating without fear or favor in pursuit of a just and corruption-free society. That was 2020. In 2022, he said that the Commission has done an outstanding job in increasing awareness and understanding of the anti-corruption framework. And as recently as December last year, he said, I am therefore pleased to note its work to expand public sensitization programs and improve investigative performance and technical proficiency, all of which represent a comprehensive approach to addressing corruption. I also commend the Commission's efforts to strengthen awareness and compliance, as well as its dedication to improving responsiveness, etc., etc. So I just want, although I know that Jamaicans on the outside know that those statements made in this hall by parliamentarians are not true, although they know that, the words here go international. So for the record, I wanted to put on there 
what none other than the Prime Minister has said in relation to the work of the Commission. And I hope that puts to rest the question of partisanship and malice. Now you have one of them call him Pernell Charles Big Data. The one of them call him Pernell Charles Jonah, the shiny one day. They look half criminal. Just like him daddy. We rub up the lands them over St. Thomas, allegedly. He is one of the main one that is fighting. Fighting so hard against the Integrity Commission. And that must say that. This brother here must have something to hide. Him must have something to hide. Why am I trying to dismantle the Integrity Commission? Just like that. Him and the one of them call him Evral Muma Lashi Warmington. They are fighting the Integrity Commission really hard. And that's why we need to put Mark Golden in a power. Right? That's why we need to put Mark Golden in a power. So all of this corruption that is going on at this given moment can stop once and for all. That's why we need to make sure so we vote in Mark Golden when the election day come so we can stop all corruption once and for all. So people, my advice to each and everyone at this moment, whenever the election call, get yourself ready. If you go out there and vote against the Jamaican wicked, thieving, liar party, without a doubt. We need a change. We need people to run this country with morals. We need people with integrity. And at this moment, these people in the Jamaican liar party now have nothing about them. It's a bunch of criminals in a criminal organization. So remember... The time is now. Time come for a change. Time come for we get rid of these criminals from out of parliament that are robbing the purse of the people of Jamaica. The people that put them in power, they are taking advantage of those people. Time come for we get rid of them. Alright? So people, remember, leave a like on this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Turn on the post notification bell for new content. Alright? Remember we are on our way to 100,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed yet, now is the right time for you to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell for new content. Alright? Now let me play this video with Pernell Charles, Big Data, attacking the Integrity Commission. Alright? So check it out, people. Love, 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 respect. We cannot contend with an integrity commission that some members or too many members of the society, including members of parliament, do not have confidence in. You often hear, and I've heard before, commentary about Director Evans being a former advisor connected to political persons. Are these matters that the chairman and the commission have taken into consideration in terms of his operation? Are these matters that they have determined whether there is any impartiality or concern of impartiality or conflict? And if so, how have they operated? How have they dealt with those issues? I have no issue with director serving. But I would want to know, as a member of this committee and as a citizen of Jamaica, how have we addressed these issues that so many persons in our society talk about and that have crippled the perceptions around the Integrity Commission? It is nonsense for this. It is nonsensical for there to be any discussion in respect of Director Evans. Director Evans went through a regular process for recruitment and employment and was appointed by the Governor General. Now, we need to bear in mind that Director Evans has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with reports. Nothing. His job is to go out there and inform people in respect of corruption. He has nothing to do with reports or prosecutions or non-prosecutions. 
And the fact of the matter is that we need to remember that our second, third, and fourth governors, governors general were active politicians. So bear that in mind when people are talking about, about somebody having worked with a politician for a period. Our second, third, and fourth governors general were senior active politicians for all their lives. And they served the country well. And this question of partisanship, we need to debunk it. And there is no question about the leak being attached to the commission unless you can prove it. Why wouldn't there be a leak while the thing is pending in the commission? And why is it as soon as it reaches parliament, there is a leak? Think about that.